Okay, this is the number 12 on Are You Ready for Calculus? And there's a trigonometry involved here. And just use the unit circle. So the first one, A, was pretty straightforward, the cosine of 210 degrees. And we can change that to radians because we're a little bit used to seeing that. And this looks like this is going to be in the third quadrant. Remember, 6 pi over 6 is just pi, so that's right on the line. So this is going to be in the third quadrant. And then remember, all students take calculus, which means my cosine will be negative in the third quadrant. It's only positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. And again, I just need to worry about pi over 6 because all the 6's are the same. Everything with a 6 in the denominator is the same. So the cosine of pi over 6, or I should say the odd ones, a cosine of pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6, those are all the same. Those are the square root of 3 over 2. Except in the third quadrant, it's negative. Okay, it's sine of 5 pi over 4. Remember, pi over 4s are going to be the square root of 2 over 2. The sine of the pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. We just have to worry about the quadrant, and this is going to put it in the third quadrant. Remember, 4 pi over 4 is just pi, which is the line. So this puts us down into the third quadrant. All students take calculus, so third quadrant is negative. Remember, the sign is positive in the first and the second quadrants, all students. Okay? All right, so that was um, B. So that was pretty easy. Both these are just doing the inner circle, which we're pretty good at. Okay, now here's the tangent now, the inverse tangent. Now, understand that in order for a function to have an inverse, it has to be one-to-one. -one. So in order for these functions to have inverses, these trigonometric functions, remember they're periodic. Remember the tangent just goes like, you know, all these little... Things like this it keeps going over and over, something like that. So we have to restrict this. So we restrict the domain. And in order to do this, we restricted the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then that little section would be 1 to 1. Okay, so that's basically the restriction on the domain. Remember, the domain of a function is the range of the inverse. So that means the range of my function, my tangent function, will be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, And you can look at these functions over here. And these are the, I got these, I got our calculus book out. These are in the first section over here. And you can see here, this is the inverse tangent. And we restricted the the domain which becomes the range of my inverse function. This is the restrictions on the domain, so I only have one rather than these up here or down there. Same thing with the sine, same thing with the cosine. We have to restrict those domains. So that change, that actually restricts, restricts the range on the inverse function. So my value's got to be in here. Okay, so those are all my only possible values for the inverse tangent. Okay, so when's the tangent equal to 1? Well, the tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4. Now it's equal to negative 1. Now this is pi over 4, it's positive 1 in the first and the third quadrant, and it's equal to negative, okay, 1 in the third, I'm sorry, the second and the fourth quadrant. That's when the tangent is equal to negative 1. But and we could say, oh, we could go all the way around and say 7 pi over 4, but we're not going to use that because we have to stay within this range. So within this range, I have to go down here and say, rather than 7 pi over 4, I would say negative pi over 4. So that would be your solution. Remember, it has to be in this range. Okay? All right, let's take a look at the A, uh, sine inverse of negative 1. So when is the sine negative 1? What angle is the sine negative 1? Well... Usually at 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. So keep this in mind. So we have to do is we understand we're in this range. Okay. So, uh, because again, if we take the sine, we look at the sine and we restrict that domain. We're going to go from, the sine looks like this. It goes like this and goes like this. So we have negative 1 and positive 1, so, and we have to restrict
And again, we're going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that's going to restrict the domain so that otherwise it starts to repeat itself and it's not 1 to 1. So this, this restricts the domain, which means the range is between these negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right? So when is the sine equal to negative 1? Well, if we look at the sine, we know it's equal to negative 1 at negative pi over 2. And again, we could keep going over here. If we didn't restrict the domain, that'd be 3 pi over 2. But in this case, since this is my restricted domain, which is the restricted range of the inverse function, if I've got negative 1, it's going to be negative 1 at negative pi over 2. And it can be equal. Now, the tangent, the range is not equal at these points because that's where it's undefined. That's where the domain is undefined. So when we flip it around for the inverse functions, it's not equal to pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. But for the sine, that's okay. It can be equal to pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. Those are actually numbers. Okay. Okay, letter E. This was a little bit easier. We don't have to worry about restrictions on the range here. Uh, but the cosine of 9 pi over 4. Now, remember, this is a terminal to pi over 4. If we go all the way around, 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi, that gives me just pi over 4. And that's real easy. The cosine of pi over 4 is a nice, simple square root of 2 over 2. Okay, here's the inverse sine again. Now, again, remember, we got these restrictions on our domain. Okay, so when is the sine equal to the square root of 3 over 2? Okay, well, that's going to be, sounds like, that's going to be pi over 3. Now, it's also positive in the second quadrant, which is 2 pi over 3, right? So, we might think we have two answers, but again, we have to have, remember the restriction on the domain. We have to be between, the sign has got to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so this won't be a possibility, just this. Okay. Now, remember, we, if we took the sign of 2 pi over 3, pardon me, 2 pi over 3. If we took the sine of 2 pi over 3, we would get square root of 3 over 2, just like we took this. But my inverse function is just defined. The range is just between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so I've got it restricted to that. Okay. Uh, tangent of 7 pi over 6. What's the tangent of pi over 6? The tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over the square root of 3. And this is going to be in the third quadrant, so this is also positive. Remember, the tangent is positive in the first and third quadrants. So the tangent of 7 pi over 6 is also 1 over the square root of 3. And then they rationalize these. So we multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, so we get the square root of 3 over 3. Okay? Now the last one is the cosine, the inverse cosine. Now the inverse, if we look at the cosine, let's take a look at the cosine. And if we graph that, that looks like... Something like this, yx, there's 1, there's minus 1. And if we graph this function, then when we put restrictions on our domain, we really can't go from negative pi, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 like we do with the sine because we, we won't have a 1 to 1 function. So we have to kind of restrict it here. So in this case, it's going to be from 0 to pi. And then, then you can see over here we have a 1 to 1 function. So those are the restrictions we put. So if you know your graphs, it helps you remember the restrictions on the range. So for the domain, I'm sorry, for the range, the range of the cosine will not be like the, like the sine. The range will be 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to pi. So that's actually the range between 0 and pi. And when you draw the sketch and you see, well, this is how I can make it 1 to 1, then it helps you kind of remember that that's going to be the domain, my restricted domain for my inverse function, which becomes the range of the inverse function. See, the restricted domain of the function gives me a, a 1 to 1 function, so I can take the inverse, and this ends up being the range. So my values have got to be between 0 and pi. Okay? So what, um, when is the cosine equal to negative 1? Well, it's actually equal to negative 1 at pi. So the answer is just pi. So you can look at the graph and you can see your value is negative 1 and that's within the range. Okay? So that's a little tricky. The inverse functions are, you have to understand them and how, how we come up with them by restricting the domains on the uh, corresponding trigonometric functions to get the range of the inverse functions. Okay?